everybody, it's Sean from Shooty School, and it's Metal Month! At ToonTrack.com. This is the last episode in my Metal Month series. Check out the other episodes in the description. Today we're editing, producing, and getting a mix going. So thank you, ToonTrack, and thank you to my subs. Grab a free trial of Easy Bass and Easy Mix 2 at ToonTrack.com, along with more info on Easy Drama 3. Let's rock. Before we edit transitions, let's make sure we're happy with our beats. I'll loop my preverse beat. When I listen to it, I remember that this beat was originally recorded at 90 BPMs. So when I hear it at 135, there's this single kick drum that pops out that does not match the riff playing with it. Even if you don't like the grid editor workflow, if it's a problem this simple, go over to the tab with confidence and just watch the kick drum lane and use your ears and eyes. This note that is floating in between the grid is the issue. I can simply select it and hit delete on my keyboard, which I'll do throughout the beat where it reoccurs. This beat is now a powerful back beat. I'll solo Easy Drummer. If we look at the snare drum lane, the bright white snare dots we can hear clearly, and the less white dots are ghost notes that are unnecessarily making my beat too busy. I could extract them here manually like we did with the kick drum, but selecting this tiny arrow button here will launch the edit playstyle feature. And if we click to select just the snare drum, then select the ghost note button, when we turn down the amount knob, the ghost notes go away. Now, we've completely cleaned up the snare track as we can now hear and see in the grid editor. If you didn't notice those ghost notes earlier, you may not have noticed this extra cymbal note here either, which is unnecessary. Not because the session drummer didn't play the right beat, but because I want this beat to conform to my more simple riff. I'll delete this cymbal as well. Lastly, the solid white notes in the hi-hat lane can easily be heard and really present a stompy feel. And the notes in between them can barely be heard, especially if the backing track is playing. If I expand the hi-hat lane here and click the hi-hat articulation, which is being played, I can see in the velocity lane how quiet those other notes are. Like in the last Easy Bass episode of the series, I can click drag a marquee around just those notes and bring them up. And notice the ridgy, stompy feel of this beat start turning more into a breathing pocket. Either feels are valid depending on what you're going for, there's no right or wrong. Now that this beat is done being produced, I will control click drag it to the rest of the pre-verses in my song, option click drag on Mac. I will do this exact procedure for the rest of the sections of the song, simply by examining the beats and comparing them to the music we've written, and massage the beats so they shake hands with your music instead of simply playing alongside it. But I want to show you one extra thing. We won't jump straight into the deep end of the pool, but let's walk slowly from the shallow end towards the deep end for a minute, and maybe editing beats won't seem so intimidating if that's the case for you. I'll loop the second half of the bridge. If we listen to the guitars, we'll hear the open power chord strumming very quickly every other measure. I want the drums to respond to that. So if I select the splice tool and cut this groove on every measure, I can isolate the areas I want to make changes to. If I launch the second measure into edit play style, I can simply move the hi-hat power hand over to the ride. I will also engage the opening hit on symbol 2 to help launch these strumming chords. When making a statement, make your downbeat punch harder. A downbeat is not where you typically bob your head downwards, as some people might think. A downbeat is beat one. It only happens once per measure. Hit hard there. I'm making this edit on every other measure to match the guitar chord strumming sections. Let's hear the simple yet powerful edit we've made with the edit play style feature. Note, the drumming is responding to the guitar riff now. And lastly, let's go where a lot of tune track users avoid, the grid editor. If you're this person, just hang with me for a minute and be alert with your ears and eyes. 
The snare accents in this beat already match the guitar open string accents. If you remember, I wrote the guitar to this beat. Let's simply look at the hi-hat lane and move a few hi-hats so they are hitting with the snare. And we'll delete the few leftover hi-hats that do not. Now that the power hand of the drummer is synced with the snare, let's select all of those hits with the click drag marquee and drag them down to symbol one. And to avoid monotony, I will drag every other new symbol hit down to symbol two. I will edit the rest of the bridge with this workflow. Now that we have a bridge that is not only playing with the band, but being highly aggressive, which will make the next section of our song feel more resolving. From tension to release. Now since our song structure is made entirely up of the same cloned beats, we will do a few transitions. Transitions are simply what happens in between song sections. They are super important to make your song not sound monotonous or cloned. And I have other videos that go into detail about them in the description so you can dive deeper. But let's just do a few right now. In the first, second, and third song revolutions, all the transitions are identical. Let's look at and listen to the end of the pre-verse as it goes into the verse. There's nothing wrong with this transition besides that we hear it three times in the song. So here's a cool trick that may or may not work for you. It's fun to try. Though we're working on drums, I will find the same transition in easy bass. I will use the splice tool and cut the last measure from the bass line before the verse starts. I will go to the view menu and set to minimize, which might be necessary, and pin the plugin so it doesn't go away when I launch Easy Drummer 3. Whatever DAW you're in, there should be a button to push to pin a plugin somewhere around the border. In Easy Drummer, I open the Grooves tab and simply drag the spliced bass line into Easy Drummer 3's tap to find drop zone. Now I can unpin and close Easy Bass. In Easy Drummer, this area provides results that resemble what is in the drop zone. I will select the 4 4 and the fill filters to further narrow my search results before I audition them. A lot of these will work with no problem, but keep in mind our criteria is extremely simple right now since we only fed tap to find a couple random eighth notes from Easy Bass. But I like this 43% beat here. Let's hear it in place by simply dragging it on top of the end of the preverse. I like it, but it's way too busy for the beginning of the song. Mabel will use it for the last pre-verse transition instead, and simply click and scrub back the edit in the first song revolution to revert. Again, that was just a fun trick that may or may not work for you, but understanding integration between programs may inspire unique workflows. Let's do a simple workflow that we already know except apply it to fills for transitions. Let me clear the tap to find drop zone. I'm going to select the straight metal folder, meaning whatever filters I choose up here will only turn up results from the selected metal folder. We're looking for fills in 4.4, and to further narrow my results, as we've talked about a few times already, I want to audition fills originally recorded at a higher tempo so the pocket feels more natural. So in the results panel here, I will simply click on tempo until I see the faster beats appear at the top of the list. I'll loop the last two measures in my verse and hit play. I think we lucked out because this very first beat works great. But since it starts with a snare on the downbeat, that's a bit too high energy for the first song revolution. I think I'll use this fill for the verse and the last revolution instead. So let's hear that. Since we're already here, 
feel free to find the other verse fill transitions as well to save time instead of moving in a more linear motion through your song. I like this third beat as well, but I think it's too long. So I'll place it at the end of my first verse and simply mouse over the end of the verse groove and click drag to scrub the verse back over the fill until I'm happy with the length. I think I need a quick snare in there as well. Perfect. You can get through an entire song quickly only using this method. Lastly, let's hear the transition into the chorus beat. It's already a great fill, so we'll use this fill later on over here. Let's simplify this first one since it's at the beginning of our song. I'll simply cut the last two beats with the splice tool to isolate the fill. Set a loop in Easy Drummer and hit Shift plus Spacebar so I hear only Easy Drummer and not my DAW. If you want to use Easy Drummer in your DAW as fluently as I do, consider watching my DAW frustrations with Easy Drummer video, the link's in the description. Now I'll launch Edit Playstyle again, but this time by right clicking on the fill and selecting Edit Playstyle. This is a great feature to try out if you fear the grid editor, and to explain it a little bit better, you can simply select all of the drums in your groove and edit every drum at the same time, a group of instruments, or a single instrument, and tweak the rest of the options in this box to automate edits. Yes, automating edits, super cool. I selected the snare and all notes button, and turn down the amount knob to take snare hits away from this beat. You'll notice the tooltip shows how many snare hits are currently in the fill, and as I turn the knob down, you can see the amount of hits decrease to five. I'll disable Easy's loop and start playback. I think this is a great fill for this early in the song, though I prefer the fill to start off with a kick drum. Perfect. We could start creating our fills from scratch in the grid editor, but that's something we can cover in a different video on my channel. Time is short for this video, so on my own time, I will complete the rest of the transitions with the three methods I've presented so far. Let's wrap up the drums, the song structure, and finally re-record the guitars as I discussed in the first episode. The guitar intro I whipped together needs a quick hand. Let's open up the grid editor where the sustaining guitar bend takes place and draw in 16th note triplets on one of the cymbals. I'll select all these notes and max them out in the velocity lane, and then drag the first slope icon downwards. And I know these loudest ones over here, they'll build up too much in volume, so I'll massage them down a little bit. That, folks, is how you create a cymbal swell if you do not have one in your MIDI collection. And with my two guitars, I will choose some dissonant harmonics and volume swell them in with the volume knob on my guitar. The intro's done. Now, at the end of the pre-verse, I decided to make the turnaround less aggressive since the verse riff right after it really lightens the song up and I want a prelude for that. So I added a little acoustic strummy style lick to it. In the last revolution of the song, I decided to open up the hi-hats a little in the pre-verse and put four on the floor with the kick drum, which is backed by the bass guitar not syncing with the guitar anymore and producing some 80s style eighth notes. And have the strings conform to the new contrasting fill we chose earlier. This is a great example on how to enter your last song revolution with a few good tricks and solid momentum.
We never finished producing the bass line for the verse riff, and I edited its turnarounds to match the guitars. Easy Bass is capable of programming vibrato. And in the last song revolution with the guitars, I played open strings instead of muted. And on the last two measures of the guitar, I opened it up with a chord and a harmonizing turnaround. About my Metallica Orion filler riff, which you hear now, I simply rewrote the unoriginal portion of it, which just happens to still work with the original bass line. And then the last song, Revolution, I simply added some double kick and cymbal accents to the ending. In the bridge, I just put one tiny trick in there. As I was doing the Slayer interval riffs, I just harmonized one of them. There's no outro of the song, so I'll simply open up Tap to Find. I'll hit the play button to pause its real-time recording process and select the kick drum and cymbal on the downbeat and hit search to be able to access the downbeat I just created in the Tap to Find's MIDI drop zone here. And simply drag it to the end of my track so there's an ending hit for our song. Now that's not Tap Define's primary use at all, but a great little perk it can provide. And of course the bass and guitar will hit the last note as well. The outro's done. And about song structure, I typically have a double chorus at the end of my songs. But since there's no lead vocal to sing the punchline and finish the story, I excluded a double chorus out. And if you were to add a solo section, depending on its vibe, you might put it before or after the bridge section. So we have a produced song to work with, and we could keep tweaking it more if we wished, but it's time to move on. Now, when it comes to Easy Mix 2, it can be one of your tools in your toolbox for people with particular workflows, or it can be your entire solution to wrap up your projects. For me, I love Easy Mix because it can do productive broad strokes quickly, which saves me a ton of time. Let's witness a few presets before I end this Metal Month series. All right, this is going to be super fast because of the length of the video. So here's broad, fast strokes with Easy Mix. All my guitars are going through the guitar bus, so I'll add Easy Mix to the guitar bus. And I'm going to go down to Mastering. I kind of already know what my go-tos are, so I'm just going to apply some generic stuff. The guitars need some mids. Only the snare is, is, has piercing mids. So this 60 preset works really well. Don't worry about the volume, we'll get it in a second. I'm just gonna turn down the, the input of the plugin. So now the snare has another instrument to share the mids with. Great, let's go over to the bass, add easy mix. Sub frequencies, if you, if you don't have good headphones or a subwoofer to monitor them, you don't really know how much bass you have. In Easy Mix 2, here's all the presets that come with Easy Mix 2 by default. The most important one's a high pass filter. It's called low cut in this case. All the bass just dropped out. Here's the bass guitar, sounds really tinny. So I'm just gonna bring this knob all the way back down and turn it up enough to get the sub frequencies to chill out because a metal song in B with a bass constantly hitting that low B, you're gonna get a big build up in those low frequencies, 20 hertz, and they're just building, building, blah, 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 blah. We wanna clean up our mix, so I just pulled out just some of the sub bass. Let's go for the Easy Drummer. Easy Mix. Now, Buses and Masters is meant for electronic music, but I don't read descriptions. I just use my ears, and there's a snare preset meant for a snare drum, snare shaper. I'm going to put it on the whole uh, drum bus. That scooped my mix, but it really brought the air frequencies out, which is a beautiful thing. This is pretty strong. These two knobs are fantastic on this, too. That works. 
that high end airy frequencies sound fantastic. I'm not going to use that much though. Good. You open up Easy Drummer. If I go to the chorus, which is symbol three heavy, in the mixer I don't have a channel for symbol three. So I gotta go over to the drums tab, select symbol three, and turn it down here. I mean, it's, it's driving my right ear crazy right now. Oh, <laughs> my ear feels better now. Good. Good. Let's go over to the mixer. Now, the macro modules, these don't do the same thing in every preset. It does whatever the engineer intended it to do in this preset. This kick knob is fantastic. It's a click knob. It'll bring out the click in your kick. I mean, results fast like a samurai sword through, you know, hot butter. Snare is uh, similar results, just not such high-end frequencies. It just cuts the mids. Listen. Yeah, I mean, it's fantastic. I'm just going to only put a little bit in there, though. And the toms, let's get a tom fill. I don't even know what this knob does. I can't hear it. I might be jaded or whatever. So I want more toms, so I'll just turn toms up in the channel. Great. Let's go to the master fader. Now we're gonna hear drastic results here. So it might just shock you. You gotta have an open mind because it might just shock you and be like, here's a completely different sound. But if you have an open mind, you might be like, well, maybe that works, you know, and then you play with it, you know? Or you might hit a button and just be like, that's my mix, done. So Matt, Metal Fundamentals just came out the other day for Metal Month. And there's these three master bus, one master bus, two, and three which are meant for your master fader. Let's just click on them. I'm not doing a volume matching workflow, so watch your ears, because these really boost up the volume, okay? Here we go. Yeah. That's it right there, I'm done. Let's check out the other two real quick. Oh, it's a good whiff on the guitar there. And a scoop. Here. I mean, that's how we do broad strokes fast and easy mix. And at this point, I can send this out to my buddies, my fans, my band. Or if I have more post-production workflows, I can apply those on top of easy mix. If you enjoyed this Metal Month series as much as I did, I'd appreciate a comment below. Check out my communities for support and like minds in the description. Thank you, ToonTrack, for sponsoring this month's video series. Thank you to my subs for always commenting on my videos. It's a huge help, and thank you so much to my contributors. You're the reason I'm still making videos. Rock on.